Model Engineering for Beginners, Part 7 How to Make Model Steam Engine Flywheels This is a bit of a blackout for some people. It's quite difficult if you don't know how to do it or you've never done it before. This series is designed for beginners to model engineering, so I'm about to machine this traction engine flywheel casting using a very simple method, which is normally the method I would use. I'm not an engineer, of course, and proper engineers really should switch off now. The way I do it is simple and quick, and I always get good results, the flywheels are always concentric, and they seem to work. So here's the principle. I would normally hold the flywheel by the centre boss, as you see here. And by rotating the chuck whilst tapping the edge of the flywheel, I would get the flywheel to run as concentrically as possible in the chuck. Then I would take a light facing cut, as you see here. The first cut doesn't get through all the shale, but the second cut will do. Bear in mind that you do not have much to play with here. If you get too heavy handed, the flywheel will jump out of the chuck, especially with this first cut, because the other side of the center boss is just a rough casting held in the jaws. Once I've machined this side of the flywheel, I will be turning it round, and then the chuck will be holding it by the newly machined surface, which means you can get a little bit more purchase on it but it's still only held by a very small amount of metal, so you have to take it easy. The lathe is running in back gear at a moderate speed, and this is fine for the centre boss, but it's not going to be any good for the outside edge as it's too fast. Here you see me facing the centre boss, and now I'm going down the sides taking a longitudinal cut. It's always important to be careful when you get near to the main casting that you don't ram the tool into the casting and then smash the flywheel, so be careful here. Once the centre boss has been machined, use a centre drill to make a deep centre in the work. And once you've done this, change the centre drill for a twist drill. And the twist drill needs to be one imperial size down from the size you want the hole to finally be. In this case I need to make a hole of half an inch in diameter in the centre of the flywheel. So by using the twist drill one size down from half an inch, it means we can use a reamer to finish the hole properly. So now we have a very accurate hole which is concentric with the centre boss. And into this hole you can apply a live centre which will support the flywheel for subsequent machining. Here I'm taking a facing cut on the outside edge of the flywheel. But there is a problem. The speed was fine for machining the centre boss, but really this speed is too much for the outside edges of the flywheel, particularly on a small lathe in a home workshop. The best thing to do is to slow the machine down. It does of course mean that the machining operation will take longer, which is really boring, but that's the way it is. So in this next clip, here is the machine slowed down. Because this flywheel is a little on the large side for the lathe, I'm using a knife tool mounted transversely in the tool post, and it's a good combination. It's a very sharp new tool, and it's really cutting through and getting under the shale there very quickly. If I was using the larger of my two lathes to machine this flywheel, I would normally use this tool. This is like a little round button tool. And the good thing about this lathe tool, particularly for machining cast iron, is when the tip gets blunt you can rotate it several times and get a maximum life out of the tip. But unfortunately I can't use this on this flywheel as it's too large a diameter for such a small lathe. So I'm just using a knife tool mounted transversely which works fine. And we're nearly at the end of the operation. Yes that's quite a good finish. But I see there's a bit more to remove yet. And at this speed I'm really glad that this lathe has a full power traverse. It would be very very boring turning the handle. Very boring indeed just watching the lathe tool going from right to left and probably back again and then right to left again. Yes, it's really boring. Excuse me while I slip into a coma on this bit. Sometimes it's good to use a knife tool like this in the opposite direction. Because of the less acute angle of the cutting surface, you often get a better finish. This speed is about right for this diameter of the flywheel. You can tell by the sound, this is the lowest back gear speed available on the lathe. If you go too fast on a home workshop lathe, what you will get is chattering, a high pitched whine, 
like a screeching noise and then when you look at the finish it's all crazy and you don't want that. I see this a lot on engines that have been made by beginners and it's usually down to a combination of inexperience coupled with the fact that the machine is probably not rigid enough. Well for all those of you who've managed to stick with it so far without falling asleep or going into a coma, this is quite a good tip. Depending on which part of the tool is cutting and the speed of the tool across the work depends on the type of finish you get. Sometimes it's desirable to have a line finish like you see here. This is just made by using the tip of the tool and moving the tool slightly quicker across the work. The main finish on the outer edge of the flywheel is using the tool longitudinally so we have a tool tip that cuts and then the rest of the tool polishes as it goes and you get a much smoother finish. I much prefer a smooth finish on a flywheel, I don't like the ridged effect. But you do see this in full size practice frequently. Really though it's a rough cut, I much prefer the smoother finish. And a good way of getting this as I've just said and here it is in action is to use a tool like this longitudinally in the tool post so the tip cuts and then the rest of the tool polishes the work and you do get quite a good finish. This is actually a very laborious video to do. It's something I've done many, many times and it's quite difficult to speak about it. What I'm going to do is split this. I have another video coming up about flywheels, which are problems you find with them. This is a great casting. It's one that I bought several years ago from Blackgates Engineering, www.blackgates.co.uk. They're my local supplier of model engineering equipment. And over the years I've bought many casting sets from them and I've had no problems whatsoever with them. Some castings are really badly made. You have to attack them brutally with a file to just get the thing to the right shape before you can machine it. Particularly if it's a spoke flywheel. I really do object to having to do excessive filing. I don't mind a little bit to clean up the casting, but sometimes they're really bad. And what makes it worse if the castings are chilled they become very very hard and almost impossible to machine. Right that's the outer part of the flywheel machine. I just reverse it in the chuck now, face down the other side but then you've got to think about the edges. You can't leave them sharp. So you can either use a V tool like this and just take five or six thou off each side or you can use an old file. But a word of caution, be careful filing in the lathe. You must make sure that the file has a proper handle not just a sharp pointed tang. So there we have it, from this horrible old casting to this quite nice flywheel. I haven't really finished, what I would tend to do is run the V-tool round the inside edge of the flywheel to clean that up as well. But I think you get the drift. Right, I can do no more on this subject, all I've got to say is thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. On the next one, I will be discussing more about flywheels and the problems that you find with them.